Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to five player game, Strike, designed by Dita Nusla and published by Ravensburger, who helped sponsor this video. It's time for the Duel of the Ages, a clash of champions that will take place within the battle-hardened walls of a grand arena. And into this grand arena, we'll throw, okay, dice, yes. But anyone who knows me knows I don't play strike with mere dice. These are heroic gladiators fighting in an arena. But whatever you call them, join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, remove the rules and the dice from the box as you'll be using the box itself as the arena. Also make sure that this foam mat is set properly into the bottom of the arena. And then give each person a number of dice based on the number of people playing as shown on this chart from the rule book. I'll be setting up a three player game in this video, so I've already set aside seven dice for each player. From the remaining dice, you then pick one to roll into the arena. These are regular six sided dice, except that instead of a one, they have this X symbol on one of the sides. Now, if the die you tossed into the arena shows the X side face up, then re-roll it until a number is showing instead. All the remaining dice you can just leave set beside the arena. You won't be using them in this game. And that's the setup. In Strike, you and the other players will be sending your gladiators into the arena. Or if you lack an imagination, you'll be tossing dice into a box. And you'll be doing this hoping to create matching sets of numbers there also known as defeating the other gladiators. Anytime you fail to make matches, you risk losing dice and will be defeated if you ever completely run out. But you can play the odds and push your luck trying to keep your game alive by tossing more dice in to create matches. Be the last player holding dice and you'll win. The game is played over a series of turns, starting with the oldest player and then going clockwise around and around the table. And on your turn, you must roll one of your dice into the arena, or as I prefer, Fire it into the arena. I mean, the game is called Strike after all, so use whatever style of throw you'd like. As dice get knocked around, their faces will change and that can help you as we'll see. For example, that's a pretty good roll as we'll learn later. And while there's no strict rules about how you throw dice into the arena, it should be clear that the side they end up on is ultimately random. You shouldn't drop a die in like this, for example. That said, be careful because dice that just completely miss the arena or bounce out or are knocked out, well, you just lose those and you should put them here beside the others that are out of the game. Before making a shot, the rules say that you can rotate the arena around to line up the best angle for yourself. And if any dice in the arena are close to the walls, as long as everyone else agrees, you can move them towards the center. But you cannot rotate, stack, or change their faces. And if a die ends up leaning against another die or against one of the walls, then you can choose to gently shake the arena until it lies flat. I personally like to play strike fast and furious, so I don't rotate the arena or move any dice. We just leave things where they land. Even if they're leaning against the side of the arena, we just count them as having no value until another die knocks them flat. But just know you can choose to move things around as described before you throw your dice in. Either way, after you roll a die, you must check the arena to see what the results show inside. And to help explain what happens next, I'm gonna add a few more dice into the arena like we might see later in the game so I can provide a better example. First, any dice showing an X are immediately removed from the game and won't be used again. Then you must take all dice that match at least one other die in the arena and add them to your personal collection. For example, here I see two fives and two threes, so I would get all of these. Now remember, X's are always removed from play first. So even if you saw matching X's, you don't collect those because they would first be discarded. Any dice remaining in the arena, you just leave there. After throwing a die into the arena and removing any X's, if you collected at least one match, your turn is immediately over. On the other hand, if there had been no matching dice in the arena, you now have an option. You can either pass, in which case the other players will take turns in clockwise order until it gets back to your turn again, or you can throw another one of your dice immediately into the arena. Now, if you choose to throw, you will then follow the same steps as before. Throw your die like I just did, remove any X's that appear, and then collect any matching sets of dice. Now, if you still didn't get a match this time, you can keep throwing in like this one die at a time, as long as you have dice remaining in your collection. Or at any time, 
you can just choose to pass. So to be clear, on your turn, you must always throw at least one die into the arena, but you can then stop at any time after that first toss. You don't have to keep tossing in dice until you get a match, but you must stop if you ever collect any matches. The catch is that as you throw more dice in, if you decide to pass, you're leaving even more options for your opponent to be able to match up with when they throw a die in the arena. So should you pass or toss in just one more? If you ever toss your last die into the arena and you don't get any matches, you are immediately out of the game. So sometimes you do want to be careful, unless you play like me, in which case you'll never be careful. Either way, once you pass, or if you're forced to pass after making a match, the next player in clockwise order takes their turn. And when you pass, you're not out of the game. As soon as it comes back around to your turn, you'll resume throwing dice into the arena, assuming you have any. Now, it is possible that the arena will completely empty on a player's turn. For example, let's say this person just threw a die in, and this was the result. First, this X would be removed, and then all the rest of the dice are matches which they'd collect. Now, on the next person's turn, they're forced to go all in. This means they must throw all the dice they have into the arena at once. After that, you'll check the arena for results as usual, removing any dice that are showing an X, and then you'll collect back any matching dice. Now, this isn't so bad when you have lots of dice. For example, here, they got most of everything back. But now the arena is empty again, and the next person has to go all in. And that's pretty hard when you only have a few dice left. Speaking of which, players can agree to keep the number of dice they have open for everyone to see, or keep it a secret in a closed fist. I prefer to keep it a secret as I find that adds a little element of surprise when a player you were pretty sure was out of dice suddenly has one or two last ones they can toss. But again, either way is fine. And those are the rules to the game, and turns will continue around and around the table until only one player has dice left, making them the winner. The game also comes with tournament rules. It's very simple. You just play a number of games back to back equal to the number of players. So with five players, you'd play five games. And you ensure that each person has a game where they're the first player. When someone is eliminated in a tournament game, count the number of other players remaining in that game, and that is the score they receive. For example, here we're partway through a game between one, two, three, four, five players. The first person knocked out of a five-player game will score four points as there are one, two, three, four players remaining. The next person who gets knocked out will score one, two, three points, and so on, leaving the winner of the game to score zero points at the end. After completing all the games that make up the tournament, everyone totals up the points they earned, and whoever has the lowest total score is the tournament winner. If there's a tie, the tied players can either agree to share the victory or face off in a single winner-takes-all game. But otherwise, that's how you play Strike. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at 4GameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.